The internet has always been a little bit rough on me with the way that I look and the way that I act or whatever. Hi, Billboard, it's Alessia Cara, and this is Growing Up Italian Canadian. Ciao, bella. a town or city called Brampton, Ontario. It's basically a suburb of Toronto. I grew up in an extremely traditional Italian family. That's a huge part of my life, a huge part of my family history, I guess. And that comes with a lot. It comes with like, you know, strict parents, strict fathers. I wasn't never really allowed to do much. So a lot of my life was like school to home, didn't have a lot of friends, wasn't allowed to like go out with the friends that I did have, um, wasn't allowed to like have sleepovers and stuff. Italians, love our music and we love to dance and we love to be loud so that was kind of always around my life. My mom would like play the tambourine and like when we were kids and we would all dance around. There's like traditional folk Italian music. Why is everybody so obsessed? Money can't buy us happiness. I believe I was 10 years old when I got my first guitar for my birthday. It wasn't until a few years later that I actually started taking lessons and tried to learn a little bit. I feel like I learned manifestation before I knew what manifestation was because I really would just like pretend that I was already successful. I would like do fake interviews in my shower and in my room and like talk to no one and like, you know, a fake acceptance speeches, like the whole thing. You know, when you have your teenage daughter saying, you know, I don't want to go to school, I just want to do music. It can sound a little bit scary. So I think there was a little bit of pushback in the beginning, but my dad had a harder time with it just because I think, you know, your parents kind of have a plan for their children's lives. And of course they wanted me to go to school and have a job that was more solid. I made a deal with them. I was like, okay, if I don't get signed or like, you know, if there's no sign of like a little bit of success, you know, in a year, then I'll go back to school and like go to university or college and like pursue something else. So we made a deal. And then thankfully in that year, I got a meeting with Def Jam and it worked out. So I was like, oh, thank God, there is a God. I got faith in you and I, so put your pretty little hand in mine. I started my YouTube channel, I think when I was about 13. I never sang in front of my parents ever, or like anyone really. I used to post like secret like videos to YouTube of me singing and I would like, I don't know why I was like specifically afraid of showing my dad for some reason, so I never showed him those videos. So I got like a little camcorder and I would just like record in my closet in my bedroom, like just so no one could hear me. And then three years later, a girl who works at my production company now, EP Entertainment, her name's Corinne, she was like doing a shift at Home Depot, she said, and she like was like looking up on YouTube and found one of my covers. She contacted me on Twitter and then called her dad, who was like the head of the company, and said like, Dad, you have to hear this girl. They were like, you know, we want to fly you out to New York. Long story short, by the grace of God, I asked my dad to come with me, he agreed. And it wasn't until that meeting with my production company, when they asked me to sing for them, then and there that my dad had like, heard me sing before. So I was more petrified for him to hear me than the production company. <laughs> Definitely cried on my first time on TV singing. After I went backstage, it was Jimmy Fallon, and I had performed my song here. And I remember going backstage after it was done, and he had like tears in his eyes. He didn't want to say it, but I know he, I know he cried a little bit. It was really sweet. I was still in high school, when I was writing my first album. I didn't know it was my first album at the time, but I was working with this production company from New York and, you know, going to studio sessions after school in secret because I didn't want to tell anybody. Oh, I ask myself, what am I doing here? Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Here was the first song that I ever put out. It was just one of those things, you know, those stories about the songs that like no one believes in and then they just become like huge. I mean, it's the reason I'm here, so it's, it's always gonna be one of those songs that's like close to my heart. It's harder to be yourself in this industry than it is to do the other thing. And so I've always had to sort of fight back or prove myself. The internet has always been a little bit rough on me with the way that I look and the way that I act or whatever. I think just constantly proving that I belong here, being who I am. She just wants to be beautiful. She goes unnoticed, she knows. The song just kind of happened and I wanted to make it a lot for myself too because I was a young teen girl that kind of 
felt certain pressures of the world. But then I think once we released it, it just sort of became like everyone else's song. And it still to this day just grows and grows and grows and has transcended all the years and days that, you know, I'd ever imagined it would. Winning a Grammy was absolutely unreal. That whole week was the craziest week probably of my life. I think everything that I had ever dreamed of, all of the, you know, fake acceptance speeches I had done in my room as a kid had just like totally come full circle. Over the last year, this whole like quarantine period, I was creative enough and fortunate enough to be creative enough to write um, an album. I feel like this is some of the best music I've ever made. It's like a dream world era. It's very dreamy. The next era of Alessia Cara is gonna be the best one yet. And it is on its way. All right, I'm Alessia Cara. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Billboard. Grazie. Ci vediamo.